Hello everyone, how are you going? Welcome to How To Be A Vancouverite. Now this is by the same people that have given us how to be Canadian, how to be American, how to ski, how to skate, how to mountain bike, and so many incredible ones. And so really, I just can't wait for this because I never fail to miss the mark. How To Be A Vancouverite. Follow these steps and you too can be like us. Step one, pronunciation. If you want to be like us, you got to say it like us. It's not Vancouver, it's Vancouver. Add the G. Now that you say it like us, Deny that you say it like us. I don't say it like that. Step two. Now we're gonna have to change the way you look. Men, it's time to get hipsterfied. Roll up those jeans. Actually, cut them off. Now button up, slip the hair, now hold this. Ladies, two words, yoga pants. Now buy something from Ritzia, and you're done. Step three. If you want to be a Vancouverite, you have to drive an expensive car. Wait, there's something missing. That's better. Step- What? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What was that? That almost looked like a I mean, pea plate, if that's the only word that I'm going to be able to say, because that's the only thing I know it as, but what could that possibly be? Is it just saying that there's rich young kids just driving around in these Lamborghinis is the only thing I can imagine it's talking about? I mean, if that is the case, I had absolutely no idea that Vancouver was so upper class, and I guess also, weirdly, you're mixing Lamborghinis with being hipster, which I don't particularly think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, certainly not Newtown hipster, so to say. And then, of course, just coming back to this, the fact that they are adding the G, I mean, I've heard that a few places worldwide do this. I mean, obviously, there are going to be plenty of places in the UK that have different pronunciations because that's, uh, well, they have some very thick accents in different parts. But even though Canada is such a large country, as far as I'm aware, their accents have not diverged as much as even the UK being such a small little island. And then, obviously, Australia, just basically the same everywhere you go. To be fair, though, I have heard that Melbourne apparently pronounces Melbourne differently, and you can tell. But I think that's only with particular people, not like these people. And I don't know if they deny it or not. Step four. Get used to this, right. and lots of it. Step five, now you need somewhere to live. How about this empty lot? It only costs $38 million, and that's hardly a joke. Step six, start talking about the weather a lot. In fact, bring it up during every conversation. Can you believe this weather? It's so pretty out today. I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. It's so gross today. And if you're not complaining about the rain or the cold, it's so cold. Make sure to complain about the heat. Ugh, it's too hot. Step seven. Now I just need to know what kind of weather patterns is Vancouver having over the course of the year because they're saying it's cold, it's rain, it's windy, it's hot, it's this, it's that, it's even humid, and if it's also beautiful, there was that snuck in there as well, but I guess I should also just see what their graph looks like for the year. All right, let's just have a good look at this. What are we possibly going to be having? So between seven and three, all right, well, they're a little bit colder than Sydney, that's for sure, and then only up to 22. Hmm, but to be fair though, I have also looked at Sydney's graph before and I definitely did not agree with that I feel as though it was way too cold. I mean, I don't know really what it's taking into consideration over the course of the 24 hour period or is it minimums or maximums, but I guess I should also just check the rain. So let's do a full comparison. Well, firstly, actually, we are going to be having inverted curves, but they are. I mean, relatively similar. There's maybe the five degrees difference. It gets five degrees colder and five degrees warmer. But let's just see the rain. Uh, yes, Vancouver definitely does get more rain than Sydney. And uh, I know that Sydney does get a lot of rain, especially because I believe that out of every single major city in Australia, or uh, let's just take the East Coast, the main big three, Brisbane, Sydney, and Melbourne. Sydney is well above, or at least above the, everyone else. Wow, they get all the way up to 16 hours of daylight. That certainly just shows you how much more north they are. Fair enough. And we also do not have the snowfall in millimetres, but my goodness, daylight after 16 hours down to 8.5 and we're going to get down to 10. So that's a massive, massive difference. You're losing oh, nearly half. Oh, yeah, basically half from 8, basically, to 16. Man, I mean, Sydney lost daylight saving not that long ago, and it makes a massive difference. Everyone just goes, ooh, it's all of a sudden it's just 4.30 and the sun's going down. What's going on? But to only have eight hours compared to 10 even, that extra hour and a half is going to make a massive, massive difference. Step seven, make sure you own an umbrella or a collection of umbrellas. Yeah. Step eight, adopt a healthy lifestyle and only shop at local organic grocers. Most importantly, make sure you never shut up about it. Vancouverites always talk about doing healthy things. Actually, good on this quinoa. I just love coconut water. Have you ever tried kale? It's really good for you. Really good for you. It's so good for you. Step 10. Learn how to do yoga. Learn how to stand up paddleboard. Then, learn how to do stand up paddleboard yoga. Step 11. Have an opinion about bike lanes. Do my tax dollars really have to go to this? A strong opinion. <laughs> Whoa, I, that is not what I expected him to be saying. I mean, I thought it was just going to stop there. Clean. I thought it was just going to watch this last really five seconds here. This. A strong opinion. Road bikers. Step. Oh, man. I mean, 
I guess that's just people being healthy as healthy as they can be from the kale to the biking to the coconut water is all just mixed in there and for so long people have been given a very hard time about it like they were saying being hipster and being this and being that but if people are just trying to change their lives for the better you can't say too many negative things about that can you even if you do have an opinion about where your tax dollars are to be spent and even if it is like in Sydney just taking an entire lane away from a car where there is obviously a lot of traffic already and then you just get rid of it that is also an interesting decision and you go hmm I also never see anyone on them you can have plenty of opinions about it but for the people that actually use it I applaud you because at least you were giving out a reason to be there just more people should use it if everyone used it I'm sure people would be rather positive about the entire situation step 12 make sure you know the following this place this place this place what this thing is and who this is step 13 okay. olympics were the best time of your life and game seven was the worst time of your life oh. step 14 you gotta be a huge canucks fan we're on fire but only when they're winning we suck. step 15 talk about luongo as much as you talk about the weather always follow his highs luongo rules that guy carries the team and his lows <laughs> Luongo needs to go. That guy's garbage. Get used to people telling you your nightlife sucks. Dude, it's way better in Toronto. Make sure you complain about bad drivers. Whoa, what the f***? Can anybody f drive around here? Complain about gas prices. Holy that's expensive. Complain about traffic. Oh, didn't they just fix this road? And just do a lot of complaining. What the f***? God, you buy your f***ing license or what? Vancouverites never need compass. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There were just way too many things that they just said that was just going, hang on a second, that sounds oddly familiar, almost like I'd live that every single day from people complaining about this and people complaining about that and the real estate prices and the bad drivers and the, what even, the, the nightlife. Everybody that comes to Sydney talks about the nightlife because of the lockout laws. I mean, I don't really know who Luongo is. I can only imagine he's the Vancouver captain or something of the sort. We don't have anything particularly like that unless you're talking about Buddy Franklin, but otherwise... There just seem to be one too many parallels between Sydney and Vancouver, and I mean, I guess even geographically, they're similar cities. They're both built on the water and in the surrounding areas, and then they're going to be having similar people in terms of the heritage of it, but I'm not too sure about whether it's surprising or not that they have this many parallels, because maybe if you went to California or New York and all these other fairly major cities within any particular country, you're going to be having a similar thing as well, but uh, it just it grinds people's gears to hear it, that's for sure. Oh, what? hang on a second. As soon as I search up that last name, or maybe Maybe it's his first name, I'm not too sure, but up comes an Australian professional footballer who plays as a midfielder for League One club in Ipswich. Wow, that's that's like top tier, yeah, for sure, absolutely. I've never heard of this guy, but why does that come up first? Oh, actually, no, Robert, it is his last name, is a Canadian former professional ice hockey goaltender. Ah, and my memory escapes me right now, but I can only imagine that a goaltender is the same as a goalkeeper, and it's not like netball positions where you have goal defense and goal shooter and goal attack and center and all these different names for different positions and goal tender is different to a goalkeeper. Regardless, that is definitely the guy that we saw in the video. And man, every single time that I just see these ice hockey players just going, they're 6'3", 191 centimeters, weighing 100 kilos of pure muscle because they're just skating around at 4,000 kilometers an hour on the ice. They truly are just incredible athletes. I got to give them that. But uh, coming back to the actual video, I have plenty of things to be learning because I don't know any of those. I mean, I can only imagine that's just the standard arena. Oh, actually, is that the ice hockey arena? Not like a, a concert arena, perhaps. That, I've seen it, but my memory is just letting me down today. I cannot remember what it's called. But ah, oh, that is actually what I saw. I definitely remember that logo. My goodness, getting bums on seats in any which way they can. They have some pretty crazy ads. This guy, however, looks like an absolute ghost town, death trap, whatever you want to be calling it. It probably is. I mean, it also looks like it's massive and I got to give up some credit where credit is due, but it absolutely reminds me of the wild mouse and so I also love it at the same time. And coming over to this cannon, no, I'm completely lost about that. Is it the start of the hockey season when the cunning goes? No idea. Just please tell me what it is. Buy your f***ing license or what? Vancouverites never need compass. They just look for the mountains. I hope you weren't expecting a white Christmas. Make sure you own one of these shirts. Don't be afraid of cougars. No, no, not those kind. The kind you find here. Learn how to ride the SkyTrain with no hands. Be proud of your multiculturalism. Yeah. Get a white friend, a brown friend, an Asian friend, a black friend, and a green friend. Learn the difference between the following, the Millennium Line, the Expo Line, the West End, West Van, Third Beach, Second Beach, and first, I mean, English Bay. Get to know your umbrella etiquette. You don't need one that big jerk. Taller people always raise their umbrella. Watch out for those corners. And sh that's just, I don't like that. That is definitely just a worry of mine. Oh man, I mean, at least in Sydney, 
But I don't know, I guess I don't have to experience too much umbrella just using and wearing. I don't go into the city that often, but man, just having to deal with massive umbrellas like that, just... I mean, the Bunnings umbrella is just a case in point right there. It's a good, it's a good umbrella. i got to give them that. But oh, umbrellas are dangerous, dangerous things. No wonder people just have so many things about them just saying, do not open it inside. Do not open it here. Do not open it there. You are just going to be cursed at every single possible opportunity. And that's probably just people wanted to just warn off the possible danger of them. But no, just listening to every single other bullet point that he was going through, I was just completely lost. And I have so much still to learn. I mean, I have no idea where the green man fits into it. But fair enough. You just need that friend in your life just to be a little bit rocky and random but there are so many particular little things about this entire place that you just go wow is it really that different to the rest of Canada and how is it really that different to the rest of Canada what are these people possibly doing in their day-to-day -day lives that just allows this entire video to be made learn how to ride the sky train with no hands to be fair though doing something like that is definitely fulfilling a well let's say five to ten year old dream of mine I mean I feel as though it's a lot of people's dream just to be surfing the train and it just goes cool and kinks over and you just actually catch yourself and you don't fall over like half the rest of the train does. I mean, yes, he may be in a bit of a snowboarding position here, and so maybe that is actually the key. Just be that way inclined, and you might just be able to be a superior human being and just never touching their very, very disgusting grab handles. But regardless, it's just a seven-year-old's dream, isn't it? And finally, to become a Vancouverite, make sure to call this place the best fucking place on earth, even if you've never been anywhere else. Oh, Did we miss? Man. And once again, I guess I'm getting a lot of parallels, but there are just so many things where you go, that is just like cut deep to the core, where people just go, ah, well, I guess, yeah, I've never been away, but oh, I just, why would I want to leave? It offers me every single possible thing. I can go to the mountains, I can go to the water, I can go to the English beach. When I do think that, generally speaking, people, to some degree, do end up getting magnetized to where they fit in the most, be it the city, the place, the town, or whatever, whether that's just because they were born and raised there and so they don't know anything else and so they were cultured in that environment, or maybe they just move across the entire world to another place whatever it may be as long as someone can just find that happy place or that place to go home and whether that be for a month or a year or a lifetime whatever it may be and whether it be in Sydney and London and Vancouver or Toronto New York it does not matter just work with what you've got because that is truly all you've got and if it's just this and you'll enjoy being healthy then good on you Vancouver sounds like the place to be